Good morning, Lisa Johnson here, looking a little bit dishevelled, if we're completely honest about it, um, because I am actually moving house today and tomorrow because it's a big move. Um, so I'm doing this at the same time because I hope this shows you you can do things at the same time as launching. You don't have to like put the whole week aside. Um, so it's all good. Let me know if you're on, say hi. It's gonna be an interesting one today because we always really like to see how many hardcore people we have who are determined to get to the end of a challenge. Like I told you on day one, hey guys, nice to see you. I can see your comments, which is great. Do give me some thumbs up and hearts so that other people can see it as normal. Um, it's really good to be able to see who has the resilience to do all four days. So if you're watching this on replay later on, let me know, because I like to see who does have that resilience. Um, there will always be people, and I did say this on day one, that start on the first day, and then as it gets a little bit harder, and let me know if you do think it's got harder as we've gone along, then they drop off. Um, but there will also be those ones that say, no, I'm committed, I'm in it, and so I'm gonna get it done. Um, and that's you guys, because you're here on the last day, which shows that's what it's all about. Um, hi, Michaela, how are you doing? Let me know as well, from day one, two, and three, which, do you, which has been the hardest day for you so far. It's showing me your comments on kind of like a bit of a lag, but that's okay. We all cope with that. Um, so I'm seeing Tina's at the moment. Morning, Tina. Nice to see you. Um, so yeah, we've talked already, and if this is the first time you're watching, because we had quite a few people join this morning, and this is the first time you're watching, then I want you to go back and watch one, two, and three. You're not too late to join in or anything like that. Um, we can, we've got all weekend, we've got all of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for you to catch up. All you need to do to be in with a chance of winning those prizes is, and I was thinking about this, if the prizes that I've said, the Dior, the Aspinall, the things that I've said, are not quite the kind of prizes that you like, because not everybody likes designer, you know, I've got lots of clients that really aren't interested in those kind of things, then if you win, we will obviously ask you what you do like and get you something you do want. So do not worry if that's not your thing. I want you to do the challenge for you. So if you do all four parts by Monday at midday, then you've done it. You are in with a chance to win and you've got this far. So you may as well do it right. You may as well get going with it. And remember that on Monday evening, there's that masterclass. The masterclass will be on at 8 p.m. UK time. If you are live, there is likely to be prizes for you if you are live. Um, I will also be telling you, I know lots of you are sending me questions about one to many, about how long it lasts, about how much it is, and about all the different modules and all the things that you're gonna be learning. I will answer all of those questions on Monday evening. Do not worry, we only do this once a year. So I spend a lot of time answering those questions. And I'll answer your questions as well about passive income at the end of the masterclass, um, if you're on that as well. So that's all of that done. And you don't have to register. There will be in the events tab a link. And I'll remind you as well. I'll remind you the link to it like 10 minutes before, like we have been doing. So don't worry, you, you won't miss it. I will tell you all about it. And there will be a replay if you can't make it live. So if you're doing something at eight o'clock on Monday, do not worry. So, so far in this challenge to make recurring revenue, we have, oh, it's not telling me your comments today, I'm afraid. It's decided to stop. So that's okay. We know what we're doing. So we worked out, what are the things that you know, including what could be your passive income streams? So we looked at that and you wrote down a few things and they might not be the thing, oh, it's given me a few comments. It might not be the thing that you eventually go on to do, but it's just to get you thinking about what you could do. And remember, if you've never had a business before, you can still do it. Remember as well that people that do have seven or multi seven figure businesses, they come in here as well because they want to learn how to do it better, how to make more money per launch, because that's eventually what you're going to try and do. You'll do it, you'll make a bit, and then you go, I'm going to do that all over again, and this time I'm going to double it, and then double it, and then double it. And that's kind of how things happen. So we talked about the passive income, what you could do. 
on day two, we talked about growing an audience and that you need to grow an audience before you do anything and that we teach you that in one to many and we do the bespoke funnel and your lead magnet, your freebie for you. Because you need to think of that title for the freebie and that was yesterday's task so that you get it out there and your perfect client, not just any old person, your perfect client comes in. Good example of this is when I was a wedding planner. Um, everybody was having lead magnets, freebies out there that said things like, here is your wedding checklist. And I thought, well, that's really good, but isn't that gonna get me every bride on the planet, which I don't really want to work with. And so I was like, what would give me the brides that I really wanna work with? The ones that want warehouse weddings, the ones that live in Shoreditch, the cool kind of hipster weddings that I want to do, um, and who are in London. And so I came up with a PDF, which was 10 of the best warehouse wedding venues for urban weddings in London. And it got me all of my ideal clients because the title will get you the ideal client. That meant they hadn't got their venue yet if they downloaded that, which meant they were at the beginning of the journey, which meant that I could still help them with their wedding planning. So be like, really think about it. Think about what would be the title that would draw in your perfect client. So that's what we did on day two. Then on day three, we talked about content. We talked about what could go in this, this mas masterclass or workshop or what could go in this course or what kind of things are going into your, like if you have a small membership or a, a big membership, what could go in there? We looked at that and we looked at the transformation statement because people don't buy wanting to learn a million things. They buy the solution to a problem. So we looked at that. And um, you gave me some amazing transformation statements. And so today we need to look at the next bit. Yeah, yesterday was the hardest. Most people found yesterday the hardest, which is really interesting. Um, but now we need to look at the fourth bit because, like I said before, when I bought a course on how to write courses, then I had to buy another course on how to grow an audience, and I did that. But then I didn't know how to sell it. I was like, how, how do I launch this stuff? And I did many courses on launching and re like refined things into what's working now because there's quite a lot of people teaching launching out there that have been teaching launching for 20 years. And it's the same course. What happened 15 years ago, it's not how you launch online now. It won't have the same effect. And in fact, if we're completely honest about it, how I launched a year ago won't work now because things have changed so much. And the reason that launches change is because our audiences are smart and they get used to certain things. So for instance, you know, three years ago, you could just put a link out there on social media and do a really good launch. There's no way that works anymore. There's so much more to it. And I will go into the, what is working now a bit more on, on Monday's masterclass. But I suppose what I'm saying to you here is when you launch something, when you put it out there into the world, if it's a course or, or a membership or a workshop or anything else, it's a six to 12 week process to do it properly. Now, there are some people that like to just do what we call lazy launches, easy launches, social media launches, and you can do that and you will get some results. But the people that you see that do these massive launches, that's because they're launching properly. And that's a six to 12 week process where there's different stages of educating your potential client. So you'll have like a warm up stage and educating on the problem stage. You'll then go on to like getting people ready stage. And then there's usually an event. So there's all of these different parts to the process for getting, you know, getting your thing out there and having the best chance because you're normally only launching for a week unless you're doing evergreen. If you're doing a live launch, it's normally for a week. So you've only got like seven days to make the most of when you're actually launching. So you want to get it right. Yes, you might be working hard, but you're working hard for that week. But the way to not work hard. So anyone that's been following me for any length of time will know that during launches, I can be on holiday. I've launched before from the biggest cruise ship in the world on the top of it. I've launched from different places. Right now, I am launching and doing my biggest house move at the same time. The reason that that can happen is because of preparation. And you really need to prep everything beforehand. You don't want to be like doing everything during the week of launch. So that's really, really important. So 
Launch wise, launch strategy is my favorite thing to teach. Um, I have people that come to me that are already making eight figures. So they're already doing multi, multi millions of pounds, but I get them an extra million pounds just with how they launch because they're doing all the rest of it brilliant. They've got a big audience, but they're not launching very well. And when people come to me and say, I did everything you said, you know, I've grown the audience. I have written the content. It's a brilliant course. I know people need it, but no one's buying it. It's because they haven't launched properly near enough every single time because launching is, it's a strategy in itself. It's not just something you can go, Hey, come buy my thing. People aren't going to do it. So with my own launches, I've done launches ranging from a £30,000 launch up to a uh, £2.5 million launch where we made a million pounds in the first hour of that launch. Um, there are certain things you can do. And generally, there's, like I said, an event. So I want to talk about one of those types of launches. There's lots of different ways you can launch. There's festival launches, social media launches. There's... Um, pay to stay launches, there is video series launches, there's masterclass and webinar launches, there's so many different ones. But the one that is my favourite is challenge launches, as you can probably tell, because you're part of a challenge launch right now. The reason I love challenge launches is because basically people can realise during the launch that they can actually do something and that they can do it well. Can you save a bad launch? Yes, you can. Um, the other reason that I like challenge launches is because people can see how you teach. What you don't want is someone coming in, like coming into your program who hates your voice or hates the way you teach or doesn't understand the way you teach because they're not going to get as much out of it. So they can see during a challenge launch whether they like the way you teach. You know, maybe they like the step by step that I do or maybe they like hate that and they want to they want to get more. And they can tell during that. But the biggest reason I love challenge launches is because those that can't afford to come into your program can still get something. They can still at least start the process, even if, you know, they're not going to get the big results like people who do the program. They're still going to be able to get some. And I think that's really important for integrity reasons. Like we should be able to sleep at night while doing the things that we do. And that helps me to be able to sleep at night, knowing that people are still getting things out of it and being able to make money. So they're the reasons that a challenge launch can work really, really well. And today's task, I want you to think about a challenge launch. So there are different ways of doing this. What I want you to do is take one of your ideas and think about the course or the workshop or the membership and think about what tasks you would give people in a, just a three day challenge. What three tasks you would give people so in the one that we've just done, you've seen that what I've done is I've, I've taken from the 12 modules that there are in one to many, I've taken four of those modules and I've given a very small task for each of them. So the first one was you know, working out your passive income stream. That's module one, in one to many. That's why we did that. And I gave you a small task to work out what you could do. The second one was audience growth. We have two to three modules on audience growth. I told you a little bit about audience growth and then I gave you a task which was to think about the freebie. The third one was content. We have a module on content in, in the 12 modules in one to many and I gave you a little bit about content and I gave you the task to think about your transformation statement. And then today we're doing launching. There's two to three modules on launching in one to many and I've given you a little bit of information about it and I've told you to do a task, or I'm telling you now to do a task on launching. So when you're thinking about what you do, have a think of how you could break things down so that you could give three different tasks about the course. You don't have to do it about each module. With Fabulous Foundations, which is another course of mine, which I know some of you have got, how I launched that with a challenge was quite different. I decided that instead of doing one module from each thing, what I was gonna do is take one topic from there, it was a six module course, no, eight module course, and I took one topic. And that topic that I decided to use was money mindset. And so I did a three day challenge just on money mindset. So the first day was, what do you believe about money? And we talked about limiting beliefs. The second day was all about 
your money story. Work out your money story and tell me one thing that you believe has affected you from your childhood when it comes to money. And the third was what money do you want in the future and what do you want to do with it? And I asked people to put a little vision board together um, on Pinterest showing what they would love to have in the future. So that was a three day money mindset challenge to sell fabulous foundations. Now I told you it was gonna get harder. This is the hardest one. I want you to think about what three tasks that you would give in a challenge launch for your program. So let's say you've decided, what was one of your programs yesterday? One of them was about learning how to draw. So I would say, right, over the next three days, we are going to draw, I don't know, a bowl of fruit. Why do I always think of an example that is nothing to do with anything I know? I know nothing about drawing. Okay, so let's say a bowl of fruit. So you might say, right, day one, we're going to do shadowing. <laughs> I literally am making this stuff up. I have no idea what shadowing is. But, you know, you would give like three parts of it. Or let's do an easy one because I don't know about drawing. Let's say you were going to do something about anxiety. You help people with anxiety. So you might do something on the first day that's to do with meditation. And they have to give you a sentence that they're going to say to themselves every time they feel anxious. And on the second day, you might do something like work out what your triggers are for anxiety and tell us two of them. Do you see what I mean? Like you're trying to get them to think about the kind of things that might be happening in the program. So with you guys, I've talked about all these different parts. You all know now those different parts of the challenges I've given you are going to be in the program. I've taken you from thinking, some of you, you can't make passive income to realizing you can actually make quite a lot of money about passive income. So the next logical step for you is then to come into one to many. And that's what I want you to think about with your clients. Like what would make them realize this is the right program for them and that you're the right teacher for them. So I can't see hardly any of your comments. I can see a couple, but does this make sense? Give me some hearts and thumbs up. Hopefully it will. What task could you do for cakes? That's a good example. So if you're teaching people how to have a business around their cakes, so they're making money, you might do, um, the first task might be ideal client. You might, you could do the whole thing on ideal client, but day one could be work out the kind of people that you want to bake cakes for. Like what's your niche? Do you want to do birthday parties? What do you want to do? And work out three things about your ideal client. The second thing could be, um, Work out three different ways that you're going to market your cakes and you teach them a bit about marketing and then say, you know, which social media platforms do you think you're going to use? Do you see what I mean? So it's like always thinking about that kind of thing. What would be the best launch for a subscription box? You could do any of them. So I've got a launch guide that you can get on lisajohnson.com, but there's lots of different ways you can do everything. Like we've done for our membership, we've done a challenge launch, we've done a festival launch, we've done a webinar launch, we've done pay to stay for some of our courses, um, we've done lots of different things. But I generally like a challenge the most, so I want you to do that bit. Um, this is falling into place for me. Good. Business isn't complicated. People make business complicated, but we don't have to make it complicated. We can decide it's going to be easy, simple, step by step, and we're just going to put the things in place to get there. A few of you have said things like, um, can I still make money if I don't come into one to many? The answer is yes, because if you think about it, you know the little parts that you need to do now. The reason people come into one to many is for the support, is for, you know, obviously the things I've told you, I can only tell you so much. It's for branching all of that out and getting all the little intricate details of how to launch. An example of that would be in the launching module, I give you a launch checklist of every single thing you need to do during a launch. So it's about, you know, you, yes, you can do it and you can figure it out. One to many will help you get there quicker. It's pretty much that. Um, and I'll tell you more about that on Monday anyway. But I'm glad it's falling into place. I'm hoping that when you see other people do things now, you'll realize what they're doing and you'll be like, OK, I can see that she's doing this type of launch. And this is good about it. And this is how I would do things differently about it. And for those of you already making six to seven figures, I hope that you can see that if you grew your audience more and you launched really, really well, you could double how much you're making. 
because that's what it's about at the end of the day. It's a numbers game. Okay, I'm going to leave that with you because I can't see any comments. I will come back and answer any comments that are there a little bit later on. Um, but if you have trouble with things, ask us. I won't be able to give you the answer of what you should do because that's part of the challenge. Um, but I will be able to talk you around the kind of things that you could be thinking about. And if you're posting in here and it's not being approved, please don't think that's because you've done anything wrong. We're just getting around 100 to 200 every half an hour. And so we're not able to accept every single one. And we're letting a few through um, that will help everybody um, rather than the really intricate ones about your business. Just so that more people can be helped. All right, I will speak to you on Monday evening. I'm going to come in, actually, and just make sure you're okay. And I might do a Q&A at some point over the weekend. But if, if I don't see you until Monday, I will see you on Monday evening at 8 p.m. Where I'll be very excited to tell you the winners of this challenge. I'm going to wrap this all up for you so that you can see how it all slots into place. So I will see you then. Uh, the link will be in here. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the four days of the challenge so far. If you have, I'd love you to put it on Instagram or on social media and tag me in and I will re-share um, re it for you. All right, I will speak to you later, guys.